This video is going to have a look at some data analysis. In our previous video, we've done our scatter plot. So in this video, we're going to have a look at how do we calculate the correlation coefficient using Excel and do the calculations required to identify the least squares regression line. So that we'll start off by having a look at the correlation coefficient calculation. And that is going to be calculated using a NIC formula in Excel. So click into the cell where you want to complete the calculation. And if you go equals, then type in corral, and then enter your brackets, that will then enable you to go ahead and select the cells that has the data in them. So the first range of cells is going to be the X, which is our height. So we want to select all of our heights. And then we want to hit the comma button and then go ahead and select all of our Y values, which is the weight. So then once we've selected those two groups of data, if we just close our set of brackets and hit enter, then our correlation coefficient is calculated for us. Now it's going to calculate it as um, decimals and fill the cell with decimals. If you want to reduce the amount of decimals showing in the cell, if you click into the cell, and then come up under the home tab, you can select the comma. That's going to format it automatically to two decimal places. And then if you come over, you can either increase or decrease the amount of decimal places. So you might want to go to four. So our correlation coefficient is 0 0.8381. And that correlation coefficient is going to show that there is a strong relationship between a person's weight and the height. So that correlation coefficient shows that there is a strong association between someone's weight and their height. So remember the weight is our dependent or our response variable and the height is our independent or explanatory variable. So there is an association when explaining someone's weight based on their height. So next we're going to have a look at some of the values required to calculate the least squares regression line. And the first value we're going to calculate is the mean of our x values. So in Excel, we can do that again by using a formula. So we go equals, and then we type in average, and then open our brackets, and go ahead and select the heights in our original data set. Once you've selected all the heights, close your bracket and click enter, and that calculates the average or the mean of the heights. Now again, it's gonna fill the cell, so you can go ahead and format that to as many decimal places as you would like. So next is the standard deviation. And again, you can use a formula for that. So equals, and then type in STDEV. That is going to calculate the standard deviation. Open brackets, and then go and select the data that is required. So our height values, close brackets, and click enter. And that is going to calculate the standard deviation. And again, go ahead and format as required. So you can repeat the process to calculate the average and the standard deviation of the Y variable being weight. If you wanted to wait and select both of them, you'll be able to format them at the same time. So now that we've calculated our input values in Excel, we can go ahead and we can calculate our A and B values to form the least squares regression line. And we're gonna start off with our B value. And our B value is going to be our correlation coefficient multiplied by the standard deviation of Y divided by the standard deviation of X. So we can enter our formula to be able to calculate that value for us. So if we go equals, and then we can click on the correlation coefficient value that we calculated earlier. And we can see that then that selects our cell H20 where that value is. So then we can go multiply, which is shift eight. And then we wanna select our standard deviation of Y and then go divide, which is our forward slash and then standard deviation of X. And then if we go enter, that is going to calculate our B value. Again, you can increase or decrease the decimal place number as required. So we can see that in our formula area up the top, we can see that it's going to be referring to specific cells. So in Excel, if we're referring to cells, 
that means that it's picking up the value in that cell. If that value goes ahead and changes after we've entered our formula, this calculation is going to update automatically. So that's something to be careful of. But it's also good that if you do go ahead and you've made an error and you want to go back and adjust, then all of your calculations will readjust after you've made that correction. So you can see that our value of 1.0179 matches the B value from our line of best fit or our trend line that we calculated or we inserted when we completed our scatter plot. So we know that that calculation is going to be correct. So we can now calculate our A value now that we've got our B value. So equals, then it's going to be the average of Y, subtract our B value, multiplied by our average of X. So once we've entered in those values, if we go enter, it is going to create our, our A value. And we can see that it's our answers come up in brackets. So in Excel, that's a way of formatting a negative number. So it's going to be negative 109.38. So now that we've got our A and B values, and we can check our A value against what was created in Excel when we did our scatter plot, and we can see that that is a negative 109.38. So our least squares regression line is going to be y is equal to 1.0179x and then minus 109.38. So that is how we can manually calculate our least squares regression line um, using functions in Excel to calculate the input values and then calculate our A and B values. Remember B is going to be the gradient and A is our y-intercept. So that's our example of using Excel to calculate our correlation coefficient and our least squares regression line calculation.